Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and in this video we're going to add more functionality to our sprite animator to be able to modify the sprites during runtime. Let's get started. Okay, let's continue our sprite animator. So far we have made it play the animation based on sprite frames, enable and disable looping while firing events. Now let's add the ability to modify our sprites during runtime. So far we've just been using this basic wonk animation, now I want to be able to switch between wonk and idle animation. We need a function to set our animation frames. So let's go into our code here, and down here let's add a public void play animation, and we're going to receive an array of sprites and call it frame array. Now inside we're going to set our member frame array that we set up here, and we're going to set our current frame to zero and display the sprite at frame zero. At the same time, reset the timer. Okay, so in my game handler here, let's add a private sprite array for my idle animation frame array and another private sprite array for my wall animation frame array. Make them both serialized fields so we can set them in the editor. And on my start, let's test swapping animations every second. So I'm going to use the function periodic from the using code monkey dot utils, which as always you can grab for free from unitycodemonkey.com. This will trigger a function every certain amount of time. So in this case, every second, let's create a new function. And this function will essentially swap out the frames. Let's set a bool, call it play walk, set it to true. And here, if play walk, then we're going to go into our sprite animator and play the animation walk animation frame array. If we're not supposed to play the walk animation, then we're going to play the idle animation and set play walk to the opposite of play walk. Down here, we're going to execute this function every second. So every second, this function will trigger. And if play walk is true, we're going to play our walk animation. If not, we're going to play our idle animation. And every time this function runs, it inverts the state of play walk. So it should swap animations every second. Let's test it out. First, going in here, and we have to add the references. Again, as a tip, you can log the inspector so you can select multiple sprites and drag them in there. So select all of these, drag them in there, and we can unlock the inspector. So let's test it out, and it should swap animations every second. He's walking, and there you go. He's in idle, and back to walk, back to idle. Okay, great. We can now swap our animations at any time. Now in here it looks a bit odd for the idle animation because it is running at a higher frame rate than it actually should. Since the idle animation only has two frames, it would be nice if we could modify the frame rate of every animation. So let's go into our code here on our sprite animator. Instead of receiving just the frame array, we're going to receive that and also a float for our frame rate. And we're also going to set our internal frame rate. And on my game handler, so in here for my walk animation, I'm going to play it at 100 milliseconds per frame. And my idle animation, since it has less frames, let's just play it, swap frames every 200 milliseconds. So let's test it out. And my walk animation should be running like that. And my idle swaps frames much slower. Yep, exactly. Now, instead of using a helper function to modify our animations, let's do it based on our input. So go into my game handler script and in here I'm going to make a private enum and call it the animation type. And we have two animations. We have the idle and the wonk animation. And I'm going to have a private animation type, which is the active animation type. Down here on our update, we're going to test if the keyboard is down to simulate the character moving. So let's make a bool, call it is moving equals false. And if 
input dot get key get key of key code dot let's say d assuming we are moving to the right if we are then set is moving to true so now in here if we are moving we're going to call a function called play animation we're going to make that function a private void play animation it's going to receive a animation type animation type so in here let's do a switch on our animation type and k's animation type dot idle we're going to play the idle animation and k's animation type dot walk we're going to play the walk animation now in here if we are moving then we are going to play animation type dot walk if we are not moving then we're going to play the idle and up here on start we no longer need this testing code and let's just do play animation of animation dot idle so we start off at idle and on update we test if we have the key down then we set is moving to true if not then is moving is false and if is moving is true then we play the walk animation if not we play the idle animation so we can go back into our code here and we have the idle animation when i press the it plays the walk animation now as you can see the animation isn't actually changing because we are setting the animation every frame even when it's the exact same animation so let's solve that so in here on my play animation i only want to play it if it's different from the currently active animation so in here if the animation type that i want to play if it is different from my active animation type then i'm going to play if it is the same then i'm not going to play it since it's already playing and i'm going to set my active animation type to my animation type okay let's test it out and it should now be playing the animation and there you go i have my idle animation and when i press the keyboard there you go i'm walking and now i'm idle walking and now idle so there you have it. We can now easily modify our active sprites during runtime. You can see how you could take this class and make a very simple character animation. Just set all the animations for moving, walking, jumping, attacking, and just swap it based on your input. As always, you can download the project files and utilities for free from unitycodemonkey.com. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Okay, see you next time.